Welcome back to the basement of Baron Morbid. We've been gone forever. Haven't we, Doc? Yes. Yes, we have. And Squeaky the Rat agrees. We have our new friend, Spooky. Yeah. Spooky's yes. pretty cool. Blinky's a little, little uh, jealous. Is Blinky even working? Yeah. Kind of, sort of. His battery's going low there. Wait, doesn't Spooky, like, answer questions? Yes, we have the thing of Spooky Answers Questions. We will have people send us in questions, and it will be so much easier if Squeaky doesn't interrupt us while we're trying to do our show, of course. <laughs> so, today's movie. Hey, hey, hey. Legend of Boggy Creek, Bigfoot, and look, is that Kevin? No, that's Devin. He looks an awful lot like Kevin. He's a clone. You cloned Kevin? No. I'm a twin brother. Twin brother, Kevin? Clone, twin, twin. Tim, Clint, clone, twin. Blah, blah, blah. Clint, clone the twin, a clan? A clan. A clan, <laughs> a clan or a tone? <laughs> twin and a clone. Tone. No. I am a twin. <laughs> well, don't tell me, tell them. Anyways. I'm a twin. Legend of Boggy Creek, Bigfoot. We like Bigfoot movies, don't we, guys? Yeah. What's your favorite part about Bigfoot, Jack? That yeah, big feet. Big feet. How about you, Devin? They never find Bigfoot. They never do find Bigfoot. Actually, that one movie they do find Bigfoot. Which one? Harry and the Hendersons? Yeah. Oh. Well, yeah, that was sort of a comedy, though. That wasn't really a no. realistic Bigfoot. Movie. That was. It was like, all the little big feet. Oh, oh, big feet. I tell you, one of these days. So we're going to have you run off, watch the first part of Legend of Boggy Creek, come back to us, and who knows what's going to happen. I have a new uh, project we need to try out. I come up with a thing called an animation ray. Animation? What? Yep, you'll see. You'll see when we get back now. Go watch the movie!
What do you boys think about going turkey hunting this year? I think we ought to go. Mr. Willie, my mom wants to, me to ask you, would you come down to our house? There's some kind of wild man down there in the woods about the quink. Now, boy, I want you to go back down there and tell your mama there ain't a thing in the world to be afraid of. I'll come down there tomorrow and check it out. <laughs> Go ahead. Yes, sir. Thanks, sir. <laughs> you know, that's the third time that old lady sent that kid up here to tell me there's a big old hairy monster down there in my field. I guess I'll have to get down there tomorrow and see about it. <laughs> <laughs> seven years old when I first heard him scream. It scared me then, and it scares me now. This is Falk, Arkansas. I grew up here. The population was about 350 when I was a boy. It still is. Falk is way down in the southwest corner where Arkansas joins Texas and Louisiana. If you've ever driven from Shreveport to Texarkana, you passed right through Falk, even if you don't remember seeing it. Aside from homes, Falk has several stores, a couple of gas stations, a post office and school, garage and motel, and two cafes where the men folk stop by for coffee and, and conversation on the fish they've caught, or the duck, quail, squirrel, or deer they've hunted. Fishing and hunting take up a, a lot of almost everybody's time. Maybe Smokey Crabtree, who lives way back down on the edge of the bottoms, will tell about a mink or beaver he or his son Travis caught.
Smokey raises beef cattle and traps part-time and works as a pipeline welder when the good jobs come along. Travis walks and paddles for miles every morning, running his trap lines before school starts. Most of the people who live around Falk are farmers or ranchers. This country is rich and fertile, with plenty of grass and water. Our land is veined with a great network of branches, creeks, river and lakes. Falk is a, a right pleasant place to live. Until the sun goes down. day in the store, Willie Smith didn't believe me when I told him about a wild, hairy creature in the woods. He believes me now. On the east, jumped over the fence, just seemed like he just sort of pushed it down with his left hand, just stepped over. It was wounded and was holding that right chest. It had that right hand on his chest all the time that it was in sight. Maybe if it hadn't been hurt uh, pretty badly, why, it might have run on all four legs. I don't know. But uh, it wasn't. It was running on two legs at all times. That was uh, about all I saw of the thing. Something came through here last night and killed my two prize shoats. Found one of them lying right here with deep gashes and cuts in him and his tongue was hanging out. Looked like something had strangled him. I keep them down off down here in, by the creek in this pen. And whatever it was, got in the pen, lifted both them 200-pound hogs over the fence. I couldn't find no place where they'd been dragged under it. I couldn't find no tracks, so I figured whatever it was came and left traveling up and down that creek. Not knowing what had killed them hogs, I just threw them away. I carried them way off out there in the bushes so the smell wouldn't get back up the house there. Next day, got up and looked out there and thought it kind of funny not seeing any buzzards circling or anything. So came down here and both hogs were gone. That thing, whatever it was, must have come back and the grass wasn't even disturbed where the hogs was. What kind of thing can pick up 200 pound hogs and walk off with them? I doubt if you could find a lonelier, spookier place in this country than down around Boggy Creek. It twists and winds its way across the Falk countryside widening and narrowing, sheltering within its thickly wooded banks a multitude of creatures that run, fly, swim, creep, and crawl. Eventually, Boggy empties into Day's Creek and flows onward into the Sulphur River. Heavy rainfall half the year causes our creeks and rivers to flood and, and spread over wide sections of densely thicketed and forested bottomland. In the Sulphur River bottoms, the water spreads out for miles across the bottomland, a lot of which is so densely thicketed that only a few hunters and trappers have the skill to make their way deep into this wild, swampy country. A lot of people believe the creature prowls back in here most of the time, but every now and then, drawn to civilization like a moth to flame, he creeps out about dusk. These nighttime visits have set off waves of terror around Falk for over 15 years. What in the world is this creature? Where did he come from? And what does he eat? are questions I've heard discussed a, a, a thousand times around winter fires and on hot summer evenings. When the creature, 
whom the newspapers quickly named the Falk Monster was first seen. He didn't seem to make any special effort to hide from people. At least Fred Crabtree, a farmer who hunted a lot, had that opinion. like anything I'd ever seen. I thought at first it might be some kind of a wild man. I couldn't tell all that hair just what it was. I changed my shells and my shotgun, from squirrel shot to my buck shot. More for my protection than anything else. If I'd have had my rifle, I believe I could have knocked him down easy. But I doubt if I would have. But I kept thinking, there's just a chance. Might be a man. And if I'd have shot that thing, it turned out to be a man, I'd have had to live with that the rest of my life. Although he was never sure, Fred got the impression the creature had been washing his feet in the icy water. A few months later, James Crabtree was squirrel hunting only a short distance from the spot where Fred Crabtree had seen him. I've spent a lot of my life in these woods, and there was something strange about that evening that I couldn't put my finger on it. It, it was just a feeling I had. There didn't seem to be as, as many birds and little small animals out as usual. In fact, they, they seemed mighty scarce. Plain sight, right, right out there in front of me. And he was, it was some kind of thing that I've never come across before. Well, he stared at me for a little while, and he just slipped out of sight. I never saw him again. Neither Fred Crabtree nor his Uncle James told anyone about their experience for years. They figured nobody would believe them. He always travels the creeks. That was one of the first things we figured out. This little branch feeds into Boggy Creek. The Searcy family lives here. Mary Beth Searcy is a teenage student. Right now, her older married sister and her baby are visiting. Her father is working in another town, and her younger brother is spending the night with a friend. So this evening, just the two girls, their mother, and the baby will be alone in this house. Welcome back! How's that movie treating you folks? Good, I hope. I keep forgetting to show the foot. I don't know the, should we show the foot now or wait till later? Yeah, yeah let's wait till later. Wait till later, wait till later, show the foot now. It's, it's getting pretty big down there. Mm -hmm. All right. I think so, it's you've discovered the claymation ray. Yes. Basically, all I have to do is push this button in the back and poof, it'll be like that. Oh, can I push the button? Sure, you gotta hold it out like this. I'm gonna be in the picture too. <laughs> Are right, you ready? On the count of three. One, two, three. Wow, shock! Look, it really worked. It turned into clay people. Oh my god, it worked! This is awesome. Wait, wait, Jock. What, what, what is that thing behind us? What do you think that? What do you think that could possibly, possibly be back there, Jacques? Um, Maybe it's a hello, Mister um, Monster thing. Mister Monster. Uh, yeah. Oh my I God, he's gonna kill us! 
I think he's not very uh, nice, so we might want to, I don't know, uh, run for our lives, perhaps? Yeah, that sounds pretty good. Does that sound agreeable to you? Yes. Okay, well then, let's get out of here. Jock, 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 are you leaving me? Jock, you're leaving me with this alien? You're leaving me with this giant alien monster thing? That's fine. I'm out of here. <laughs> they have no phone. And the nearest neighbor is a mile or so across the woods. Mary Beth? Mary Beth, would you please hang something over the window? There's a draft on the baby. Yeah, okay. Just a minute. Mary Beth, would you please hurry up? This draft's gonna give the baby a cold. Okay, okay.
was a long night of terror. In a few minutes, Mary Beth was revived, and the three women, shaking in fear, freezing at every sound in the darkness, waited out the long hours of blackness. The baby slept peacefully through it all. Next morning, they would discover their dead kitten, completely unmarked. Apparently, she had simply been scared to death. The beauty of the bottoms under soft moonlight is transformed into dark, menacing danger. And the shadows of the night trigger your imagination into being places where possibly the creature is lurking. Because you know he's out there, somewhere. Like this 13-year-old boy, you've grown up as a woodsman and hunter. You never miss an opportunity to get yourself a deer. Yes, there's no doubt about it. The dogs are hot on the trail, chasing the deer in this direction. Later, they found two-inch saplings broken down by the creature in his pain and fury. They saw crushed underbrush and bloodstains, which, in the excitement, no one thought to gather a sample of. But they did not find the creature. The terrifying stories of face-to-face -face encounters with the creature triggered the Falk community into action. A big hunt was organized, with some of the best hunting dogs in Arkansas and Texas involved. They even brought in some famous dogs from Tennessee. I got to go along, and I still vividly recall how I was trembling with excitement. We had heard that earlier some other dogs had refused to trail the creature, cowing in fear and running back at the first whiff of his sour pig pen smell. But we were confident our dogs would get the job done. Yeah. 
Hey, Earl, where'd that old boy go across them dogs in here from Tennessee? Where'd you get that black sand, Frank? Boy, he's out of that litter by that old long dog, Dick Williams. Pretty good dog, too. Wish we had a sand something that month for touch, so we got started. This when old Henry Red Dog crossed the trail. There won't be no doubt it's him. Oh, he right, Mr. While several groups hunted on foot, others scouted designated areas on horseback. While we made our way along the dirt road he had been crossing, the men on horseback swept across the woodlands along the creek areas. About this time, our dog struck his trail where he'd crossed the road. They found his trail. Go get him. That a boy. Trail now. You've never seen a more embarrassed and angry group of dog owners. Not a one of these famous hunting dogs would trail the creature's scent. They whined, tucked their tails, and came running back, obviously scared. I was sure disappointed. Despite the failure of the dogs to trail the creature, several groups of hunters kept going far into the night. Later, we got word that one hunting party had got the creature to scream angrily back at a wounded rabbit call, but moved deeper into the forest when they tried to get closer. the hunters were interested in plunging into thick woods in pitch darkness, knowing he was out there. Often I've tried to imagine how the creature must feel, since his very appearance and the sounds he makes frightened us. Our immediate reaction was to try to kill him. I suppose if a strange-looking creature from another world showed up, he'd get the same reception. Actually, at first, the creature didn't try to harm anybody. But now, after being hunted and hurt, he suddenly disappeared. So far as we know, he wasn't seen again for eight years. Where did he go? Well, we believe he's simply headed back deeper and deeper into the bottoms, beyond the reach of men. Only the alligator and wolf, crane and possum, and a thousand other wild creatures heard his occasional lonely cries ringing out over his watery domain. 
This is where the story plays, a world on which we seldom gaze. A page from the book of yesterday's birds and beasts and wind and water. Here beneath the bright blue sky, no man smoke blinds the eagle's eye, and things that crawl or swim or fly, feed and breed and live and die. Seasons passed, summers into falls, winters into springs, and somewhere in the remote wilderness of the bottoms, the creature spent his days. The sulfur river flows, rising when the storm cloud blows, and this is where the creature goes, safe within a world he knows. Perhaps he dimly wonders why there is no other such as I, to touch to love before I die, to listen to my lonely cry. No. We're back! Yeah. We're not yeah. play anymore! Well, Devin never really went with us. He, apparently the ray wasn't pointing at Devin, so it was just you and me. But maybe next time Devin can go on our clay adventure. We'll have to wait and see if the, the, the people demand it. If they say, yes, we want more of the claymation. Or more of squeakers. Yes. So, anyways. Legend of Boggy Creek? Yeah. Kind of, pl kind of plodding along, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely a different kind of movie. Yeah. You like it? Yeah. Every yeah. other Bigfoot movie. My every, favorite. Every other Bigfoot movie. Every other. Nice, yeah. nice. All right. Well, we're, in a little while, we're going to show me uh, introducing uh, some rock and roll down at Louis. Louis, Louis Trophy Grill. Yeah, yeah, I know what it is. That's right, you never get to go with me, do you? You don't meet the height requirements. Whatever. Ha! <laughs> Jacques is furious at the height requirements. Soon, though, he will grow like a weed. No, I won't. And he'll be too tall for the show. Nope. I will, too. And, and apparently so will Devin. So, there yeah. you go. All right, we're going to go back and we'll finish it up. Finish up the movie. Watch the end of it, and then they're going to come back to us. And there's our lab cat. Can we get her in here? Or? No, no, she's uh, leaving in the other room. Maybe she'll come back for the goodbyes. We don't know. Get out! None of us Falk boys would admit it, but for a long time, knowing the creature might be around had put a damper on our pack trips back into the wilderness. But as time passed, and stories and conversation about the Falk monster died down, teenage boys again began to go off on long camping trips in the bottoms. Travis Crabtree is the kind of fearless outdoor kid that would have gone anyway, even knowing the creature was around. There's nothing Travis likes better than to spend the weekend camping on one of the hilltop islands created by high water deep in the bottomland.
Hey, Travis Crabtree, wait a minute for me. Let's go back in the bottom, back where the fish are biting, where all the world's inviting, and nobody sees the flowers bloom but me. Travis Crabtree, do you see what I see on the gentle winds of morning? A million birds are singing like the bells of heaven ringing, and nobody sees the flowers bloom but me. Drop me on a patch of land Never stepped upon my man Where the crystal water flows deep While the falcon flies high Across the yellow-eyed sky Lord, ain't it great to be free Hey, Travis Crabtree It's the right life for me While the birds and beasts are crying Because the sun is dying And nobody sees the flowers bloom but me And nobody sees the flowers bloom but me and nobody sees the flowers bloom but me. When he's down in the bottoms, Travis always stops off for a visit and a cup of coffee with Herb Jones. Herb Jones is a man who likes a lot of privacy. He's been living alone in these bottoms for the past 20 years. Travis always enjoys these visits with Herb, Herb how you been and doing? never fails to bring him tobacco and other supplies. Herb can spin yarns for hours about his experiences with the wild creatures of the bottom land. Herb tells Travis to be on the lookout for a big old wild boar with double curled tusks he spotted a day or two earlier. Herb limps because he once accidentally shot part of his foot away in a boating accident. Although he was all alone, he made it out of the bottoms to a doctor. I guess kind of like a room here. I've been living down here by myself for a long time. About 14 miles by boat from my place to the nearest road. And it's a pretty good walk to town. Them Crabtree boys, especially that Travis, always drop by to see me when they come hunting and fishing. They always brung me tobacco and sugar and stuff like that. Even a bottle of wine every once in a while. <laughs> Did you notice my, my bottle tree on the way in? I use them bottles as floats on my trot lines. I catch some mighty big catfish and buffalo on them lines. There's an old crane flies over every day, looks at my place. I don't know what he's looking for. Once you, you get to know these bottoms, you, you never lack for something to do. People always ask me, 
Why stay down here? I tell them I stay because I like it better here and I would anywhere else. Looks like they could figure that out for themselves. <laughs> Another thing. People always ask me, have I seen the Falk monster? Now, let me tell you something. There ain't no such thing. I've been living here in these bottoms for better than 20 years. I ain't never seen or heard no monster. What was that? I, I don't know, but let's get out of here. was back. Once again, the lure of civilization had brought him out of the wilderness. Paper headlines would herald the return of the Falk monster, and people would get together around Falk to relate the latest rumors on the creature. Every dead animal found in the forest was blamed upon him. This dog and others found dead might well be his victims. Excitement in the community reached a new peak when a farmer named O. H. Kennedy discovered these strange three toed footsteps in Willie Smith's bean field. Radio, Newspaper and television coverage resulted in nationwide publicity. Uh, there it is. Must not be over four inches wide. Mr. Kennedy, you say you found these tracks late Sunday. Now, was that late yesterday afternoon? Yes, sir. Just for sundown. My wife and I went out for a ride. She's been feeling poorly lately. And we decided to stop by the bean field to see if the ground was too wet to plow. We called Willie Smith right away. Mr. Kennedy, do you do you think this creature could be a Sasquatch? Um, uh, 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 sa Sasquatch? Uh, I don't believe I know what that is, sir. Uh. Well, uh, the Sasquatch was an Indian's word for a legendary giant tribe of very shy people. They live mostly in the woods uh, up in the Pacific Northwest. Well, uh, uh, I, I didn't see anybody. Uh, all I've seen, sir, is these tracks. Well, now, doesn't the uh, Sasquatch have a normal five toes? This thing here has uh, only three toes. Yes, and the adult Sasquatch footprint is bigger, too. It's 18 inches long on the average. Could these be gorilla tracks? No, I don't think it's a gorilla. A uh, gorilla has five toes and very seldom moves upright on two legs for very long. But this thing would have had to drop down on all fours to travel this far. What about a orangutan? This is the same thing people around here have reported seeing over the past few years. He's reddish brown. And that's the same color as orangutan. Well, I don't, I don't think this could be orangutan. The number of the toes are wrong. Uh, excuse me, Mr. Kennedy, you spent a lot of time working in this field, right? Did you ever see tracks like this any here before? No, sir. I, I can't say as I have. There's a lot of fresh animal tracks around this field all the time. Of deer and wolf and bobcat and all kinds of other tracks, but uh, I've never seen anything like these before. Well, Mr. Kennedy, uh, did you ever hear anything uh, out of the ordinary down here? Well, I've uh, heard some pretty peculiar things out here, but, but I've never seen nothing unusual out of this before. I wonder what moves the creature to pick a particular patch of woods and return to it again and again. These woods, next to the bean field, must be one of his favorite haunts. More than uh, what I heard, I guess it was what I didn't hear that made it kind of spooky. Even when that tractor's running and you can't hear nothing, you get a funny feeling that uh, something's wrong. Then I, I think 
Wasn't sure, but I'd think I'd hear a low growl or a hoot or a grunt or something from the back of the trees, and and you know there's something out there's watching you. And I tell you, there's some kind of animal hanging around this field, all right. And he ain't no animal that uh, from this part of the country. He always travels to Boggy Creek. That's Bessie Smith's children playing at the edge of the woods over there, where Kennedy heard the creature. That's Charlie Walraven coming down the road. This road runs along the north side of the woods. It was long about dark. I was heading into town that evening. I seen this thing come out across the road in front of my car. I just couldn't even believe what I was watching. You know, I reckon there's a lot of folks that don't believe anything until they see it for themselves. Of course, then, if they like me, maybe they'd be wishing they hadn't seen what they did. You know, that thing gonna up and kill somebody one of these days, sure as a world. On a bright, moonlight night like this one, you'd figure he'd stay out of sight. But nothing seems to worry him when the urge to prowl comes over him. It could have been a fatal mistake if the man who lives here had been home tonight. He has a high-powered rifle handy and knows how to use it. His daughter, Nancy, has invited two girlfriends over for a bunking party. 
No. We're, our team's much better in Arkansas, huh? You know that. Arkansas High, well. Right? I know, but they're defensive. Yeah, but look at their offense. Nancy, I like the way they cut your hair. I think it's cute. Well, Frank liked it long. He's been sulking all week. Now, don't pay any attention to him. He doesn't know anything about it. Did y'all hear something? That's the wind. I can't see anything. Do you? No, I don't see anything. Then it must have been the wind. I hope. Let's all have a coat. Do y'all want one? Yeah, get me one. Yeah. Nancy, there's somebody moving around outside this trailer. Do you, do you think it could be some of the guys? If it is, I'll kill them. I can't believe it's them. They went to that game in Texarkana. Listen. I hear something breathing. parents returned, they would find the girl still half hysterical with shock. Before the creature finally wandered off, he smashed flower pots and overturned everything in sight. These radical changes in his usually cautious behavior may be caused by lonely frustration, for he apparently is the only one of his kind. Normally, he never comes out of the woods before dusk and then moves very cautiously staying within quick return to the shelter of the trees. But tonight, he's on the rampage. It wasn't the first time the creature had prowled in the vicinity of Howard Walraven's mobile home which is located only a couple of hundred yards from where Boggy Creek flows across Highway 71. We heard him lots of nights. Sometimes it sounded like he was right outside the window. It was so loud. And uh, I had my two good dogs tied up right there behind the house. And they'd always get excited and scared, you know, whenever he'd come around, we heard him. But I, heck, I never figured he'd attack them. It just looked to me like he grabbed my dog and ripped the hide right off his back. Now, let me tell you something. He killed the finest dog that I ever had, but I'm going to get him one of these days, and that's going to be all she wrote.
sometimes the creature sticks to one patch of woods for a long time, then impulsively works his way far up the creeks before being heard from again. The creeks. He always travels the creeks. When he next showed up, it was several miles upstream. In the spring, this house was rented to two young couples who moved in together to save money. Charles Turner, his wife Ann, and Don Ford, who is Ann Turner's brother, and Don's wife Sue. Each couple had a small child. Don and Charles had just been hired by a big cattle ranch in the Falk area. Since both men would be required to work late at night, the girls would be company to each other. The two families moved in on Monday. Thursday night, the first of a series of hair-raising incidents occurred. Who do you suppose that was? I don't know. Let's take the kids and go to the landlords.
death metal for you tonight. This first song is going to be called Excuse Me, Mister. find the thing. Are you sure you don't want to go back to my place till the men get here? No, no, that's okay. If you've checked and you're sure there's nothing here, then we'll be okay, I think. I couldn't find a thing, but I'll come back in a little while and check on you. Okay, listen, Mr. Johnson, we sure do thank you. We appreciate so much. Well, you're welcome. I'll wait here till you get in the house. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye. The next day, Friday, the Fords and Turners had visitors. Don Ford's younger brother, Bobby Ford, and a cousin, 12-year-old Corky Hill, arrived for the weekend. They'd heard about the great fishing around Falk and were anxious to wet a hook. 
Y'all be back before dark. Yeah, yeah, we're gonna bring back the supper. Who told you the vision was good here? They're here. Just have patience. Look at the size of that guy's footprint. That ain't no footprint. That's funny. Well, what's so funny about that? He's only got three toes. Well, it's getting kind of late and the fish aren't biting anyway, so I think we ought to go. Sure is spooky down here.
think I hear something. Get any and Sue. Get up, get up. Bobby heard something. Oh my gosh, it's back. Shh. I heard something. Shh. Is that him back? It's gotta be. Corky, go get the kids. I see him. He's coming around the port. Bobby, put that chair under the door. Hey, 
Side of the house. What does it look like? Well, best I could tell, things real tall and hair all over. Red eyes. Find anything, Constable? Not yet. This piece of tin been off all the time? No, sir, it hasn't. Have you looked in under there? No, sir, we haven't looked down there. Here's a panther track and a little cub with it under this house. You mean a panther's been living yeah. in the house? That's what it is. It's a panther track. There wasn't any panther we shot at, Constable. You'll bet on that. So well, that's it. what that track is. You keep this shotgun, this light, and these shells, and, and then if you need me, will you come at it? Okay, sir, we sure will. And I'm gonna drive up the highway each way and look to see if I can see anything. We sure do appreciate it. Yeah, and I'll pick the gun up tomorrow sometime. We sure do thank you for coming back. You're welcome. Well, thank you, sir. You're welcome. If you need me, give me a call. Okay, we sure will. We got you. Ben, can Yeah. What kind of place is this, honey? A panther living under the house? Somebody trying to break in? Well, we've got flashlights, we've got the guns. Now let's all go to bed, get some rest. I'm with you. Let's go to bed. Come on, Ann. Right, let's, let's go. go. Come on, Ann. Let's go to bed. The thing coming the window, don't worry about uh, it. We got the guns. I'm going to I, I don't want to stay here no more with that thing. I got to go to the bathroom. See you
can take care of the girls. Golly. Bobby could not be aroused from the state of shock he was in. Everyone piled into the car and raced to Constable Walraven's house for help. Walraven took one look at Bobby, arranged a police escort, and sent them on to the hospital in Texarkana. Bobby recovered swiftly, and the Fords and Turners moved away. They don't plan on coming back. What the creature was after inside the Ford house is perhaps the biggest mystery of all. I was thinking about it today when I decided to drive out to our old home place, now run down and abandoned. Standing out in this field, it all comes rushing back and an icy tingle starts down my spine when I recall that terrible, lonesome cry. It was so long ago that it Seems incredible the creature is still out there, somewhere, right this minute, maybe even watching me. Of course, you may not believe that, or any of this story. You may think the whole thing is a hoax, and that's your privilege. But if you're ever driving down in our country along about sundown, keep an eye on the dark woods as you cross the Sulphur River bottoms, and you may catch a glimpse of a huge, hairy creature watching you from the shadows. Yes, he's still here. And you know, I'd almost like to hear that terrible cry again, just to be reminded that there is still a bit of wilderness left. And there are still mysteries that remain unsolved and strange, unexplained noises in the night.
This is where the story plays, a world on which we seldom gaze. A page from the book of yesterdays, birds and beasts and wind and water. Here beneath the bright blue sky, no man smoke blinds the eagle's eye. And things that crawl or swim or fly, feed and breed and live and die. Apparently, loud noises offend the lab cat. Oh, she's mad now. She's gonna, she's gonna get me. Oh, look out! Oh, my God! Oh, lab cat wanted nothing to do with me. Let me check for lacerations. No, no, everything seems to be good. Yep. She has not gotten me this time. So, oh, we you doing your Dr. Evil there, Jacques? Good. Who we had the cat? Wasn't that cat bald? Yeah, it was bald. Yeah. So are you gonna? I know Kevin didn't work out as a as an assistant to the assistant. You're gonna you're gonna hire Devin. Maybe he can come back next week and help us out and bring us you know coffee and cheesecake or something. We'll see. We'll see, Devin. That sound good to you. You want to come back? I better not catch you sitting down. No sitting down. Devin's our workhorse around here. Me and Jacques are the only ones that sit. Everybody else must stand unless they're really tall. If we had somebody really tall down in the basement, we would have to have them sit. Otherwise, yeah, like, all you would see is like this much of them. Mm. And that would be what could we I'd probably be? see up to here. Couldn't see their head. <laughs> their head would be chopped off by this basement of treachery. <laughs> treachery and doom. Luckily, the furnace decided not to kick on in the basement of Barry Morbid, so it's been kind of quiet down here. <laughs> we're glad to be back after all these weeks off. Um, we have no idea what we're showing <laughs> next time, but be sure to come back. You can check us out on YouTube. Just look for Barry Morbid. We'll go give this to the cable access people and see how that goes. And any last word from Jacques Strop, my esteemed colleague? Anything? Words, not noise. Anything? Enjoy some coffee cake. Enjoy some coffee cake. As you notice, we're all sporting the Barry Morbid goggles now. If you're in the basement, you have to have these. Otherwise, the radiation will get to you. Did you know about the radiation, Devin? Yeah. No. When no. we blasted off in that ship, we left some radiation back in the lab. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so Devin, any last words from you? Hmm. Anything at all? You're stupid. Devin, don't say that. Goodbye. Goodbye. He did it, folks. That's it for us. Basement of Baron Morbid. The movie tonight was 
Legend of Boggy Creek, we're out of here. Good night! Come on, everybody, get a partner! Yeah, get me one, yeah, too! Yeah, baby! Oh, come on! Yeah! Get a partner. You gotta have a partner. If you wanna be a black belt, you gotta have a partner. Then you move on the snow. That's where you learn some more. Yeah!